T-Man 978 Chill Review. Hello everyone, T-Man 978. Today we're going to be looking at Masterpiece G, Trainbot Getsui. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce it. Night Freighter is his job, as you can see right there. See that? Here's the packaging from right there. Here. There's the top. Here's the back with this various stuff that I'm probably going to be showing you. Shadowy outline of that body. This right here. That right there. And did I show the bottom? I don't know. Let me open it. Before I open it, thank you, Nate Simmons, Syndicate Santa, for letting me borrow this so I can review it. Here's how things came packaged, not too different from Shoki. Inside the packaging, besides the actual figure and all the accessories, they do have this instruction manual correction sheet, which, lovely enough, is completely 100% in Japanese, because they don't care about America. But, uh, yeah, here's this card you get. It is card quality, not credit card. Here are these stats. And you get the instruction book, which apparently must be crappy. So, yeah. All right, get Siri in train mode out of package. You get this the two sets of tracks again. Getting it set in here took some effort. Um... These wheels, or the, yeah, the under wheels or whatever, they were like pushed back. But now I pushed it forward. Eee. Come on. Yeah, they were back like that, so I couldn't do anything. But I pushed them forward, and then I was able to get it on there better. Up under here, we have this gun hidden in there. You don't have to transform it for that. It just goes in here. And when it gets like to a certain point, oh yeah, these little tabs right here, they fit into a groove. You may have to pinch this shut in order to get it to stay on there. Um, you get these things right here. I guess these are the electricity grabbers or whatever you call them. I could be wrong, but these feel like they're made out of die cast. Yeah, they are like, they feel solid, but you can plug them onto the top of the train. I'm trying to make sure I put this in the same direction, front and back, but there you are. You can slide on this more. I don't really even feel like it's rolling. I feel like it's sliding. And you get this connector that goes onto the bottom somewhere. And what that does is you can put it on one of the stands that comes with like the Seekers and some other Masterpiece Transformers and pretend it's flying off. So there you go with that. I'm not doing all that in this video. But yeah, there you are. But let's let you see it up close. He yeah, has that detail right there, the window detail. It's slathered in paint, like damn near the whole thing. You get those numbers right there. It almost looks like product marking. You get the connector points and whatnot. This is what you're looking like up here. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I do not feel like transforming. Um, Shoki to do the train mode comparison. It's a good thing that Google exists. And if I'm not lazy, I might do you guys a, do your guys' job and do, look up that image and put it right here because I know there are a billion images already. But there you are. All right, this, this stand thing that I talked about. Like, there's a little, like, five millimeter peg on there. There's a hole up in the air. So basically we shove that in there till it, it pegs in there sturdy. And then you take that stand and put it on there. But yeah, use your imagination. I'm gonna put up a whole playlist for these things since I'm gonna be getting all of them. And 
You can go back and look at the previous figures that I reviewed. If you couldn't tell by my grown man hands, this is a tiny ass train, which basically isn't in scale with anything masterpiece, but it's part of the masterpiece line, not in train mode at least. In robot mode, according to pictures I've seen, it's in scale with the robots, which doesn't make any real sense. Here is a masterpiece car right there. So yeah, he should be several, several, several times bigger than that, but he's not. Here we go with the legend scale figure, the new age RC. Still might be too big, but yeah, yeah. What you gonna do? All right, my feelings on this, it's a train. I, myself, I don't, I don't care. This is one of the most uninteresting things ever. Yeah, I will say this. It is nicely painted and nicely detailed. So, there's that. I mean, outside of the wheels down here, which I cannot get lined up satisfactory to me. I've transformed this thing and transformed it back in. No, I can't. It doesn't. It's, I feel like this should go up higher, but so that might be on me. But I can't figure out for the life of me how to put that back in there. But um, yeah, it's a train. It's it's okay. If you are a train enthusiast, I'm pretty sure you would love it. But you probably wouldn't love that things like this doesn't really turn, so it just only goes straight. So what you gonna do about that? And it it's cool that it. It has these things, and like I said, they feel die cast. And you are able to connect something to the front and back, which is not happening in this video. I do not feel like transforming Shoki. But, um, yeah, it is what it is. Now, transformation. We need to remove these. And I showed y'all how to remove the gun. I already did that. Now, which side? This side with the empty gap right here that's what I where I'm grabbing pulling this forward I'm kind of like rocking it above that chimney looking thing and like actually gotta like kind of rock it rock it up this is scary because it's made out of transparent plastic that joint now I can get it back in this direction all right, I'm going to separate this and start separating here. Here's the, the most toughest part about transforming this thing is, and I'm going to go ahead and separate these, is figuring out where the pegs are. But, like, you can bring that out right there. But now we need to go ahead and separate this right here. But we need to kind of get that out of there. So what I did was just bend it that way. And I'm going to... Did I do it right over here? I bent this to get that out of whack. And now I kind of want to bend this out of here. It's like no wiggle room to get that out. So you got to kind of like twist at it. But now I can get my fingers up under here. And I can... Groove that away. And now I'm gonna just go ahead and boy, oh freaking boy. These little pegs, that's the annoying part. But we should be able to separate this. There we go. And now I got that out to the side. While we're still here, I'm gonna just go ahead and do this now. Bring these panels right here down and now down here this is all interesting I'm gonna flip this little connector thing I'm gonna flip that down this way so I can be out of the way like these don't attach to anything which is kind of annoying but it's all right down here in the legs we need to move this gray part let me turn my lights up hold on i'm not sure what this is going to look like later on youtube but it looks really dark to me but this piece they suggest that you pull this down 
You don't really have to because you can just flip that around without moving it. Move that. And then this is a later step. But what I'm going to do is bend this this way. And I'm rotating it in such a way where this joint is looking like that. I'm going to just slide that up now to be honest this pulls out on a little slider we can go ahead and wrap this around and there's a peg hole right here and there's a peg hole behind this when you push the slider in you can peg that into place if you didn't already we can move this foot where that needs to be now this can slide back or this leg can slide up into there like that. We can lift the part of the roof up right here like that. Bring this down and around like this, wait, like this. And now this right here needs to open up. and swing out that way and come down and that can like peg together basically that leg is done let's try that again over here i'm going to rotate this and make sure this piece is hinged out like that they don't specify that in the instructions but that's that's the best and oh yeah, I didn't show this. There's a little gap right here. We need to pinch that. So that it's one cohesive leg or knee. But let's test this theory. You know what? If the foot is too high up, it will get in the way. So rotate this around. I guess this is supposed to be like heel support. I don't know, but we can put the foot back up. And out here, we can slide this slider out, rotate this around. If this gets in the way, we can bend it in this way, but rotate that around and pinch this slider until we can get this peg in there. And we can put the wheels under there. And we can go ahead and push this into that area. Now I'm going to lift all this up, rotate this. But I think before I get this all the way folded down, I'm gonna lift this out, bring this up like that. I'm kinda doing it my own way and going by the instructions. The instructions show you do it later, but I think you might be better off not doing it later. But wait, pinch this knee together on this slider. And we can go ahead and do this and bring this. And it's supposed to tab into place right here. And I feel it tabbing together right there, but I don't know where the tabs are specifically. But basically this is done. And now this is kind of tough. But we need to slide this down out the way. And we need to get this off of the front. Oh, well, you know what? You're supposed to actually lift this up off first. And then this piece right here, which is painted, is that painted? I think it's painted. It needs to come down and groove into here. Now, <laughs> you should be able to unpeg this a little easier. Well, it did it right there. I'm spreading it out that way. Bruh. I got it untapped. Sheesh. Now we can... Let's shift the 
across for it now. Get that out the way. But we can bring this down and just have it out the way for now. These arms, because I'm not doing a reverse transformation. Pay attention to how these shoulders are in there. And these panels right there. Pay attention to that. Because going back, this arm the arm situation is probably one of the most complex parts with this. But basically, you need to lift these arms up. And then we need to unpeg this stuff. But these need to rotate this way. So what did I do? The elbow joint is actually right there. So rotate the elbow joint that way. Now we need to rotate the shoulders. Rotate the shoulders. And when I rotated the shoulders, you notice that these kind of stayed in place because they're on a hinge. We can move. We can now rotate these up like that while we're still in this position. Then go ahead and bring the arms around and down. And this little hinge right here comes out and comes down. There's like no easy way. When you're actually playing with the thing, it will make sense to you. I seem to keep wanting to point this thing to my left for some reason. Open this up. Bring out the fist. Rotate the fist. And shut that. Open this up. Rotate the fist the way it's supposed to be. And back here. With this down like that. We can go ahead grab the head and lift it until it like kind of soft locks then we can lift this up and this hinge right here we need to just bring this down and just push it as push it flat now this can come down and wait before we bring that down this can actually rotate and now we can bring that down but here we are focus turn these lights back down it is a robot you know what's crazy most of this video is going to be the transformation because this is just a simple robot let's do a 360 let's straighten this up And yeah, there's like no way to make this flatter. It's just dangling out there. I mean, you could fold that up and have it hanging up like this, but yeah. But man, then he has like a gap right there. But um, basic robot. This head, this is based on an old design and whatnot. But this face reminds me of something that was sculpted during Transformer Cybertron to me. Why? What the heck? Focus on the tag on the face. Yeah, here is the face. Fully painted. I'm pretty sure they've been using these heads over and over again. He almost looks like Optimus Prime without the mask. Uh, yeah, this neck joint is tight. Let's let you see some of these details up close. Here are the feet. The feet. I can't tell whether they're painted or just plastic. Um, if there's any die cast, it must be these wheels. But I can't really tell you for sure that they're die cast. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's made out of cheap plastic. But overall, I'm going to be honest with you. This feels like a 
Studio Series figure, but they allowed them to have as much engineering as possible to get it to look as much like this. And they, it has better plastic than Studio Series. That's what it feels like to me. Well, let's get this articulation out the way. The head on a ball joint can look up that much. It can't really look down, it can rotate, can tilt side to side a bit. You get a hinge right here, which I like, and a hinge right there. You do get some reverse butterfly. This does not lock in at all. This panel right here can fold back and it can still rotate up like this. But um, you have a bicep swivel and double jointed elbows right here. The wrist rotates and you can open all the fingers at once. Good thing, because you can put the gun in the hand like that. You get a waist swivel and you get some teapot action because of the leg joint or the ankle pivot in his other move. These go up and down and out to the side. The skirts go up when you kick forward. He doesn't kick back much. I don't know what's stopping it, but it's stopping. You can go out to the side pretty much all the way. You get thigh rotation, bend about 90 degrees. And the foot right here, you get only this much ankle pivot, which is pretty much nothing. And the foot goes forward and can come back. I mean, I guess you could arrange these, pull this out here to be better heel spur as far as the ankle pivot. But yeah, getting him standing up well, especially on this surface that I'm working with right now, does not seem to be great. This heel support is there, but it's kind of rounded. So it doesn't really seem to work well for me. Um, I have been able to get him into like some decent poses. So I'm not too terribly upset with it when I can do it. But yeah. I'm not overly a big fan of it. It has so much kibble. It's just aggravating. So much kibble. I, I feel like they over-engineered it. Maybe you had to do it to get it as cartoon po accurate as possible. But I feel like if they would have kept the original G1 design and just put some joints in there, that would have been good. But I, I know the original figure couldn't have had like this much. I'll have to look up pictures. I know they didn't have like this much stuff hanging off the back. I, I'm willing to bet you it didn't have all this. But I don't know. It's okay, but I'm not a, a big fan, to be honest. Here is... Shoki right here. And Shoki's head is like huge compared to this. It's almost like they're definitely not <laughs> and they're the same scale. Shoki is a little bit taller. But I don't know. Looking at them from the front, I couldn't even tell you they're a part of the same team. Which is probably accurate to the show. Shoki has big giant hands. Well, I, I'm not going to go into Shoki. You can watch my review. And depending on where we are in the, these re reviews, check out my playlist. I'll, I'll have that link down at the end. Now, these things are Masterpiece officially. But as you can see, they're pretty much Voyager class right here. Here's my upgrade kit. Ultra Magnus right here. Which is about the scale they were in the cartoon. 
Here's my commander class motor master right here. Well, these guys aren't the star of this video. So, yeah. As you can see, pretty much Voyager class scale. Or the height of an Autobot masterpiece car. There in the room, I did a whole bunch of comparisons, like I said, in Shoki's review. Go check back on that or Google. Google, Google, Google. If there's anything extra, you can lift this up, take the hand gun out of the hand, fold this, and this piece right here tabs into the back. You could actually reverse it and tab it in this way if you want. And I can still cover that. What? Yeah, and there's a stand point right there. Decent robot. Um, if you like this design or if you care about these, they're worth it. It's not horrible, but I just don't like a whole bunch of kibble. I definitely don't like the way the feet are designed as far as stability and whatnot. It is cool that he can look up and then you can make him look up even more. I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of the butterfly joints and the arm articulation is just good overall, basically. You can get expressive with this, like I said, but um, yeah, mm. I'll keep reviewing these as, <laughs> if they keep coming my way, if Nate doesn't stop collecting these, but I, I'm bored already. I already knew I was going to be bored. And um, maybe the next, I think the next guy looks a little bit better than this one. Hopefully that is the case. It seems to be like a more cohesive robot. It didn't look like it has as much kibble and whatnot, but I could be proven wrong. I didn't do the combined mode in the last video, so I'm not going to do it in this one. I, if anybody's still even watching this, thank you. If you sat through the transformation, thank you. But I'm pretty sure not a lot of people did. Because I don't even watch combiner masterpiece figures videos. So <laughs> I super appreciate you if you are listening to me right now. Hashtag completionist. I'll do combined mode conversions in uh, another video when I get all six of them how about that thank you for watching this until next time t-man 978 out of here figure action that one's me join the syndicate toy hunters facebook group link in the description click click the videos click the videos baby click click the videos